Hey guys, James here. Uh, today is the one year anniversary of when this channel was first started. It's insane, really. Like, never expected this channel to get so much attention over the past year for so many different things. It's been crazy. I've been extremely grateful. I am just. Thank you all for supporting this channel and seeing our videos and stuff like that, but I wanted to take a look back at some of the videos because some of them were good. Like, like really good. Like, honestly, I'm not a huge fan of what I... Honestly, I'm not a really big fan of, like, what I do or, like, my performances on stage or anything I make, really. I don't think it's that good, but there's a few videos that I just look back on and I think, you know, that, that turned out alright. Yeah, I like that. I don't know. I, I don't want to, like, pat myself on the back with this video, but I just thought it might be interesting to see, like, my personal favorite videos I've made over the course of the past year. I thought that'd be interesting to just take a look at as a sort of countdown. Um, this is not going to be a very heavily edited countdown because, well, I only really have two days to work with the editing software to uh, get this video done, and I have like five other videos I need to do in those two days, so it's uh, going to be hectic, but yeah, this is just going to be like kind of a vlog thing, really, me just sharing my thoughts with you guys, basically. So, it'll be nice and laid back, I'll just tell you how I rank some of my videos and like yeah go from there you know it'll be fun uh so without further ado this is the top 11 shaferless productions videos why top 11 honestly number 11 i just couldn't resist not talking about like it was so close to making the list and i just i can't resist i have to talk about it you'll see why when you see what it is but yeah it's not a reference to anything, don't look into that. The fact that this is a top 11, that's not a reference, just trust me. So, top 11. Even though I don't have a lot of editing time, I'll probably edit together some transitions, so... Transition, go! We fought with him. Me, I died for him. Me, I trusted him. Me, I loved him. And me, I'm the damn fool that shot him. Okay, I'm the downbeat. And so I crashed on the top when I'm lying in bed just to get it all up. What's in my head? And I, 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 Where do I begin with this? You know, I, I've heard this song for all my life, basically. But. One day, I don't know how, but it just hit me. One day, I thought, Carl Weezer. Yeah. Honestly, I just, I look back on this video, and it's just, like, insanity. I look back on this video, and it's just, like, 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 it's, it's such a stupid idea, but at the same time, it's such a brilliant idea just to merge these two things. Like, it may be one of my most fitting mashups I've ever made, but it might be one of the weirdest mashups I've ever made. It's... I, I, I don't know. It's just interesting to talk about. Like... Just seeing Carl like singing this song, I don't, I don't know what it is, but it just, you can just picture that, you know what I mean? It just, it works because you picture Carl singing that song. When I first showed that to like people, like actual people, not just uh, reading comments on the internet and reactions and stuff like that. When I first like showed actual people my digital media class, they were like on the floor, they were like dying, and I was like, oh, thanks guys. Like, that, that was the highest compliment to me, was the fact that they were, like, dying on the floor. I was like, oh, man, thanks, it means so much. Uh, I mean that, like, non-sarcastically. Like, that really does mean a lot, that they found it so funny. I, I don't know, it just... 
again, this one was so close to making it to the top 10, so I just said, screw it, top 11, you know? I just, I had to talk, ironically, I haven't really been talking that much about the video itself. I've just been talking about the ridiculous idea of it, but how would you go about talking about this video? I don't know. Honestly, sometimes I kind of forget about it. Like, when I'm thinking about the videos I made, I just kind of forget about it, but then I was looking through my uh, video feed trying to come up with my list, and I was like, oh yeah, that one. Uh, this is kind of a mess, I know, this number 11 spot, but... Oh, man. What else can you really say? It's, it's Carl Weezer. Singing, hey, 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 I don't know. It's only number 11 because, like, I thought the clips could have matched up a little bit better. Again, that's totally on me. Like, I'm going to be very critical of myself in this video. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Some of the clips I thought I could have matched up a little better. Some of them are kind of, eh. But, honestly... Mid's Carl freaking Weezer singing, hi -ya, hi -ya. I'm actually impressed I managed to finish that video without, like, saying, what does my life become, and giving up. So, uh, yay for that video for actually being made. Yeah, good job. And me, I'm the damn fool that shot him. If you can't get the shield generator fixed, we'll be sitting ducks. Okay, now he's dead. For a very long time, one of the most interesting videos on YouTube for me have been YouTube poops. Like, they just, the idea of this random mishmash of stuff where there's absolutely no rules except just destroy a source with other sources and make it funny, that just always intrigued me. But even though I've had access to video editing software for a while, I've never really considered actually trying one because, well, it seems like iMovie isn't the ideal YouTube poop source. And, yeah, I kind of write about that. But, I don't know, I figured as long as I just kind of, like, throw clips together instead of trying to do sentence mixing and all that jazz, maybe I can make something somewhat decent. And, I don't know. So I uh, tried my hand at one with the uh, Phantom Menace. Um, I just thought it would be a fun one. I came up with a lot of ideas for it. Because, like, the thing is, I always used to come up with ideas for YouTube poops in my head, but I couldn't really do anything about them because I didn't have any, like, knowledge of how to edit a YouTube poop, so... And in some cases, I didn't really have the software to edit it either. So, yeah, I just kind of said, eh, well, it'll just be a dream. But then I thought, yeah, you know what, I should try it, so... We did the Phantom Menace because I thought of a lot of jokes for that because it's quite a joke-filled movie and yeah, I think it turned out not bad. There, there are some scenes that really kind of make me cringe, like the, uh, I don't know. Oh, the one with the Yoda where he's like, fear leads to anger, anger, fear, anger, fear, fear, woo, 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 woo. Like, I don't, I don't even know what I was thinking about that. There's also the one where uh, Palpatine is electrocuting Simon Cowell. Just, just listen to that. Oh my god. Uh, Palpatine is electrocuting Simon Cowell and he just explodes and it's like, Wow! How original! Which, ironically enough, I made that joke earlier. So, I don't know. A lot of the clips where I just kind of loop a person speaking because they don't have enough time to say the lines that I'm making them say. Those kind of make me cringe a little bit, and I don't know. That's basically it. I thought for a first YouTube poop, it's obviously not that good when you compare it to like the big YouTube poopers who have been doing this for years, but I think it's not bad for a first YouTube poop. And I don't know. I kind of rewatch it and I'm like, <laughs> you know, George Lucas. <laughs> Again, it's like poetry, sort of, they rhyme. So, yeah. 
Yeah, it's not bad, I guess. I had fun with it. Next! I think my uh, favorite part, and again, this is hard because there's a lot of little tidbits in there that I really liked. Uh, well, I don't know. There's so many tidbits that it's really hard to say. But one of my favorite memories of this is uh, when I wasn't sure the quality would be good on it. So I took it to this one website that converts videos to HD. And um, apparently you had to pay for it. So uh, I couldn't see the full video in HD, or whatever HD the video source would give, give me, I don't know. It was confusing, but they did give me a 10 second sample from the video, so I could see, I guess, what the HD looked like. And the 10 second sample was that scene during the pod race, where that, like, dinosaur guy who has a family in the one other scene, like, that, that wasn't just a random, like, thing I put in his text, that he actually had a family in the movie. It's it's such a bad movie, guys. It's so bad. Oh my god. But anyway. Um yeah, he just he the scene where he runs into the Thomas the Tank engine and just explodes. And just I saved that little ten second clip because like when me and Chris watched it we were just dying. We just loved the fact that it was that specific scene where he just runs into Thomas the Tank engine and just that was that was something. You know, we have a little fond memory of just that one scene, so... Yeah, that's something, I guess. Moving on! And me! I'm the damn fool that shot him! There is no future There is no past Thank God this moment's not the last So, when I first made this video, as you can kind of tell if you read the video description for it, I thought this was like my finest work yet. I was like, oh man, this is so good. And I thought, okay, maybe I was a little pretentious when I said that. Uh, and I even made fun of that in the Hitler Reacts video that I made. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Looking back on it, though, yeah, I think I am pretty proud of it. It was, it was really nice to see, like, Two of my really, two of the things I'm really passionate about coming together, like, Majora's Mask is my favorite video game of all time. Rent is currently my third favorite musical of all time, you know, not bad. So, seeing them come together like that, I just, I don't know. Well, of course, it's, it seems kind of weird at first when you think about it, like, you wouldn't think those went together. But just that specific song with the ending on Majora's Mask, I just thought, yeah, it seems like a decent idea, and so... It happened, and, yeah, I thought it turned out pretty nice. It just really felt like the message they were trying to get across in that song really tied into, like, the message of Majora's Mask. Like, I don't know, just hearing the words of those, give in to love or live in fear, blah, blah, blah. It, it just seemed to be what Majora's Mask was going for, you know? I just, I don't know. I thought some of the clips lined up well, like the give to love when Lulu is there, or whatever. Yeah, Lulu. It's Rudo and Operina, Lulu and Majora, so yeah. Uh, when she's there with Link, and then live in fear with the skeleton guys. Seeing Romani and Kremia there, seeing the old lady and the uh, bomb guy actually beating time with the music. Just the magnitude of seeing the giants taking their steps while, like, you know, the music gets all grand like that. The ending kind of gives me... not the ending. Well, the ending, yeah. But also the beginning really kind of gives me chills and the moon just looks up like that. You're probably not seeing the footage of that right now because, uh, I don't have a lot of time to edit this, but... Watch the video and you can see what I mean, but... I don't know. Yeah. This is what it speaks to me. There's some things where I thought, eh, some of those clips are kind of boring, a little static. And that's why it's only, like, number nine now. Like, this used to be, like, oh, man, this is the best thing I ever made, and now it's number nine. And it was even surpassed by a few videos that came out before it that I decided now, eh, they're a little bit better. But, still. It turned out really nice, I think. I 
why I love Majora's Mask. It just, it's deep, man. It's a deep game, and just the ending of Rent seemed to bring that out, like, really well. So, yeah, why not? Well, this is good. Let's go for it, yeah. And I think I'm gonna now, I think I'm, like, gonna end all my segments by saying just, like, yeah, it's good, moving on. I'm turning into Peanut Butter Gamer here. Oh, man. Anyway, let's, let's go. Oh, wait, what am I doing? I haven't even talked about, like, the, uh, favorite part of that, where, uh, what's his face? Where, um, Romani, not Pamela, like, and her father at the end, when the music starts swelling and changing, that... That really gets me. I think I should just talk about like my favorite bit from each video. Nah, that might be hard. Plus, I don't know how to choose a favorite bit of the Carl Weezer video. I really don't. I'm very sorry about that, but... I, again, how do you talk about- And me! I'm the damn fool that shot him! This is madness! Madness. This is Sparta! Most of my videos, when I finish them, I'm just like, okay, I, I made this basically just for myself. Like, so I can just watch it, because it was an idea in my head, and I thought, okay, well, I'll just, you know, watch this, and if other people like it, that's great. They probably won't completely get it, but that would be cool if they liked it. But with this one, I... it wasn't a request from anybody, but... I specifically made it with other people in mind. I figured people are going to, like, die of laughter if I make this and actually make it pretty well. And people did, so I took it as a sign as, hey, this video is pretty good, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like, just that 300 trailer, oh my god. Growing up, I saw so many parodies of that and just so many little mashups of that, and now... Now that I'm, like, kind of big with making mashups and stuff, well, not big, I just think I'm big on making mashups, like, it's a big hobby of mine, not that I'm, you know, really big when it comes to mashups, except for the one, which we'll get to, trust me. Now that I really like making mashups, I figured might as well make a mashup of that trailer, like, I mostly do music ones, but that trailer... It deserves one, and I think it deserves it with, like, the previous videos that we've done in, uh, digital media, and... Ooh, man, did it work. Oh, my God. Just, I don't even know what to say. This one is one of the few videos I've made that I actually find hysterical. Just, it, it kills me. It really does. Just seeing all these random things flying around with these sound effects and the... Whoosh, and the spot up, and oh, it's it's great. You know, you could really make a three hundred mashup out of anything. I don't even think this is like my accomplishment. This is like nothing. Anybody could make a really good three hundred mashup because it's just such a great trailer to make stuff with. So I don't even know. It kind of like automatically gets a spot on this list, like. Because you, you can't go wrong with this sort of mashup. Just, it's, it's just gold. You can't go wrong with this. And, yeah. I guess it didn't really go wrong, because it was just, yeah, turned out good. Probably the best bit is, like, any time the door slams on people. Like, oh my god, every single time. That just, I die every time. It's good. It's raining now. It is getting really rainy. I better go shut the window. But yeah, th there's a reason I made it the 100 subscriber special. Because, like, it just seemed like exactly the kind of subscriber special that, like, should happen. Even though most people come to our channel for Spongebob and Hamilton anyway, so it's not like a lot of people were really watching it, but still. For like all our, all the people at school, it was definitely a fan favorite, and 
Oh my god, I, I keep revisiting it, I really can't get enough of that one, to be honest. And it's weird to say that about my own video, maybe it's a little narcissistic, but... Mm, what can I say? <laughs> it's 300, like, how can you not laugh at something like that? Oh man... Where did Zack Snyder go wrong? And me! I'm the damn fool that shot him! In the dark of the night, terror will strike her! That's the least I can do! Now, here's one I doubt a lot of people were really expecting. Like, this one kinda was released with no fanfare, nobody really watched it, and... I don't know, I don't see why anybody would. It's... Anastasia is kind of a really obscure, non-Disney movie. In fact, I honestly have never watched it. I, I don't know anything about Anastasia at all. The only thing I know is In the Dark of the Night is an amazing song. And with this video, I actually came up with the idea back in September. But it just died for a while. It was on the back burner. Then one day I decided, eh, I'll try to revive it. Actually, my brother really wanted me to revive it. He's like, so when is the Gear Him video coming out? And I'm like, fine. And I started making it, and it just came together. Like, oh my god. Gear Him's movements combined with this guy's singing voice. It was a match made in heaven. Like, I couldn't ask for a better, like, combination. Even Carl Weezer and He-Man. Like, this was even better than that combination, somehow. I don't know how. But, oh my god, Girahim was, like, perfect for this. It felt like he was actually singing it. His little dancing, the curse is complete, and just everything like that, just, oh my god. I don't know how it flows so well. Now, this video does have a few problems, I noticed. Like, there's a few static shots of just the bow Coblins, and it's just like... Couldn't be better. I don't know, there's a few shots, like a few shots where Gearham's not really doing that much. But, I don't know. It kind of ma matches with what he's singing, I guess, but, mm, yeah. But for the most part, just like seeing him move and just go all over the place, it, it feels like he's actually singing. It feels like this song was written for him, and in my opinion, that's a sign that the mashup is like really, like, gotten you, I don't know, hooked, I guess. Like, that's a sign that a mashup has done its job if it makes you believe that it's not a mashup. Like, it's it's crazy. I just... I don't know. Praising my own stuff is weird, you know? I, I feel dirty. Mm. I don't know. Oh uh, man, I should have brought Chris here and I should have given him a script and like say, here Chris, read this and pretend you're saying it. Because I feel so weird. I feel like a huge narcissist. I don't know. Well, I guess I am pointing out the flaws in the videos. And yeah, this one does have a few flaws. But just... Whew, the good stuff. Oh my god. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I should mention, I do... I'm not a huge fan of most of my videos, okay? So... If I had time to make a top 10 worst, high, worst Schaeferless videos, it w I would probably make it, and it would probably be more than 10. So, just keep that in mind. But, you know, these are just ones that I think I've earned the right to gush over, I guess. I don't know. I'm a huge narcissist, aren't I? And me! I'm the damn fool that shot him! might have noticed so far is that there's really not many videos on this list that actually consist of footage of me and my friends and stuff. You know, we've had one so far, and the other thing is, all of the videos so far have been from senior year. Like, this is the first one from junior year, and it's kind of just like a recap video of all of them. But, honestly, I've 
really loved this video ever since I first put it together. Like, it just felt like a perfect way to recap the year. Like, ever since digital media ended, I really wanted to, like, make a recap video. And I didn't know how to go about that, but then I thought, hey, the DK rap, you know? We have, like, kind of five people who do video stuff. Well, let's put them in as the DK people, because that song was going through my head, and I was like, yeah. And then I listened to the Space Jam version, and it was like, whoa, I should have done this. And the thing was, digital media for me ended halfway through the school year, so... Throughout the other half of the year, we had time to film a few more things, like this toast commercial, which, by the way, I almost made the list. That'll probably be in the honorable mentions. I'll put some honorable mentions later. Um, the Boomwhacker one, and the random Super Bowl thing. Thingy. Whatever that was. Uh, so, I figured, well, I want to throw those in, too. And this Space Jam one seemed like the perfect opportunity, so here we go. Just the way everything meshes together in this one, it just, you get clips from every video that we filmed over the course of junior year. You get the whole thematic thing by seeing each character have their own time in the spotlight. You know, just the stuff with uh, Jamie and Chris, I think, really matches up well. Like, it really gets better as it goes on. That's the great thing about this one. And when we get to the end where it's like, everybody get up, it's time to slam now. That just, oh man, I really have a good time with that part. It just really feels like a lot of fun. Just seeing the slam now, and the walnuts, peanuts, the, how fast everything goes there. You see these little clips. I really like theme songs that take kind of the clips from each different, um, you know, each different part of an episode and just like a bunch of different episodes, put them all together. And you see like the wackiest portions of each, you know, each character has during the show. Like you see all their wackiest moments in one big montage and that's like the theme song. And this is kind of like our theme song, I guess, even though it's copyrighted. Well, it's two copyrighted songs rolled into one, so that's even worse, I guess, in a way. Uh, yeah, it, it just seems like a really satisfying, fun video, and it just summarized how much fun digital media was during junior year. All the camaraderie there, before I became an endless mashup making machine, who only occasionally filmed Spongebob episodes because they didn't require a script. And, yeah, I don't know. I definitely had a lot more fun with senior year than junior year, to be honest, with filming videos, but... You know, relatively speaking, you know, it's like comparing, I don't know, crap, I can't think of a good analogy. Cut to the next one. And me, I'm the damn fool that shot him. You know, am I ever going to have a transition where I don't get cut off or say, okay, moving on, next? Because I feel like every single transition so far has been that. Oh well, here's the one you've all been waiting for. Hello, young lady. We're selling chocolate. Is your mother home? Mom! What? What? What's all the yelling? You just can't wait for me to die, can ya? Whew. Yep, the one that started it all. Chocolate with nuts. Oh man, what a fun one this was. Like, you have no idea. It, it did take like four months to film, as it says in the description, it was a four month long passion project. Because it was hard to get each and every person there to like film their scenes. But recruiting all of our friends to just come together on this huge project, that was crazy. Because this was before like we really started getting into like the larger projects in digital media that required more people. This was back when we were first, like, still doing these as basically school projects first, and then YouTube uploads second. So we just, we were thinking about what we could do, and we wanted to do something big, we wanted to do something ambitious, and then we thought, what if we reenacted chocolate with nuts? And it just, it went on from there, like, 
We didn't get actual chocolate bars, sadly. We just got these granola bars, but just, yeah, we got, um, you know, we got all our friends together. We got Jamie, we got Nathan, we got him to play Squidward, that was great. All of our friends, we wanted to get as many cameos as we could. That guy who played the uh, con man, Andrew, like, we really wanted to get him in one of our videos before he graduated. And that was great. The voice of the skeleton, oh my god, Josh Mitchell, that kid, that guy, that man. He's a man now. That guy, just anything he puts his mind to, he can do. Like, any part he can play. It just, it was cool to work with so many different people who were, like, these actors on stage in our productions. And I guess I technically am, too. But, but still, it was cool back then to work with those guys and just put them all in. And the editing process for this was almost as fun as the filming process. Like, we had a ton of fun filming this, but just editing it and uh, putting together all the different uh, musical cues in Spongebob, putting them all in there, you know, finding scene transitions, just all of that crazy stuff. It just amounted to one big, almost living, breathing video that we were really passionate about and that we just really had a great time with. We were never really intending to make sequels to this. We just figured, okay, this will be our one major project. But then when it actually started getting popular on YouTube, we were like, huh, you know what? Let's, let's do more. So we moved on. We did Life of Crime, Graveyard Shift, Secret Box. Hopefully we can do a few more in the near future. And it's it's been an incredible time. Like... I mentioned this in the previous video, but yeah. Seeing all these people responding positively to Chocolate with Nuts and the other Spongebob videos is fantastic. I could not be happier. It was a great experience to film and edit, but just the greatest experiences we've got from Chocolate with Nuts has come after its release, if that makes any sense. Just seeing so many people saying they really love our videos. And that, that's just incredible. I really like it, so... Yeah, it was good. Hey, is this gonna be the first one that doesn't end with me getting cut off? And me! I'm the damn fool that shot him! We popped the balloon! Ah! We can't return it! What? We're there! We have to confess! Confess? Are you crazy? We're not talking about some hijinks mail fraud here! WE STOLE A BALLOON! Chocolate with Nuts may have been the first one, but Life of Crime is where we really started to have even more fun than we already did with these Spongebob reenactments. Like, oh my god, Life of Crime. The first scenes we filmed, we filmed this one across the spread of like, many months, just like the other one, but we were very like, you know, out of order, I guess you could say. We were kind of out of order with Chocolate with Nuts too, but it was only like certain scenes in the middle that we didn't really film in order. But with Life of Crime, we filmed the uh, opening scene, no, we filmed the, uh, the scenes in the field where me and Chris are in that grassy field where we're like on the run from the law. We filmed those back in October. And then like, no, late November, we filmed the scene where we're running to the jail. And then it was early December where we filmed the opening scene with the uh, Mystery Theater. And then mid-December we filmed the scenes with uh, Wyatt who played Mr. Krabs. Just that one scene. And then we finally merged everything together. Oh, I almost forgot, in November was basically, like, late November, Thanksgiving break was when we filmed the, uh, scene with, uh, the scenes at the house with the balloon. That was great, at, at Allie's house. Those were really good times. But, just the amount of fun we had at every single one of these locations was just so phenomenal. Just, it was really about the fun factor that I had with these. Um, I didn't mention this when I was talking about Chocolate with Nuts, I probably shouldn't have, but while I think this one's fun and, I, you know, funny a lot of times, I'm not a big fan of the editing, per se. 
Which is weird because I did rank it higher than a lot of the other videos that I think are really, like, more well put together. But it really just was, like, the connection of all these scenes that just really made it work and really made it get a higher spot, I guess. And also the fact that it was just such a blast to film and edit together. That even if the editing was a little bit choppy, it was just kind of nice. Life of Crime, I kind of feel the same way. The editing is a little choppy still. But it just... The scenes work so well on their own that it just really doesn't matter that much. Like, I've always felt that the Spongebob live-action episodes are really not meant to be put together professionally. They're just meant to be people reenacting Spongebob and just having a good time. Like, I really don't think great editing was really required for those, and considering that was my philosophy about them, I really have no qualms with ranking them above the videos I think I really put a lot into the editing and making sure every clip flowed well. Because, again, this is like, these are like live-action things as opposed to just mashups that are like put together, so I guess it does kind of make sense that I'd feel that way, but I don't know. I guess the intention was just to have fun, not really be professional, and we honestly weren't really looking for huge views anyway. We really only made Life of Crime because we wanted to like, you know, show the fans, hey, you know, will we be willing to make more of these, so. That was really the intent behind it. We really didn't care about views that much. But it was cool, you know? That so many people did respond to them. And Life of Crime somehow ended up surpassing Chocolate with Nuts in terms of views, even though it had, like, Chocolate with Nuts had a four-month head start. And eh, I'm okay with that, because as you can see by this list, I think Life of Crime is the better of the two. Uh, spoiler alert, Graveyard Shift didn't quite make the list, and while I definitely liked that one, there was a lot of audio issues and editing issues that I had with that one that kind of prevented it from putting it on the list. I had to really, like, work with the editing for that one and work with the audio, and I don't know. It didn't come out quite as well as I had hoped, but I still have a lot of fun with that. And the ending with the hash slinging slasher, all that stuff. Basically, like, the halfway point of that video, I think, is where it really picks up, as well as the uh, part where Wyatt barges in. Money? That, that's, that's great. But why am I talking about it? We're talking about Life of Crime, and... I don't know what my favorite part of Life of Crime... Probably the stuff with Chris, where he's, like, in the grass, and he's like, You evil... Blah. Like, that stuff, you guys have no idea how great of an improviser Chris is. He basically improvises everything he does on film, and he is a genius at it. Like, it's, it's really great. Like, you don't even know, man. You don't know. And me, I'm the damn fool that shot him. Now we come to the big one, Luke Skywalker Hamilton. Oh. Guys, you don't, you don't understand how happy this video has made me, okay? I discovered Hamilton back in November, and I was obsessed with it. I loved everything about it. It's honestly my favorite piece of fiction ever created. I mean, technically it's non-fiction, but, you know. It's fiction based on non-fiction, you know, basically. And so, then I hear this genius who wrote this show and starred in it, Lin-Manuel Miranda, is, like, gonna write a new Cantina song in The Force Awakens. The first thought I had was, oh, there's a new Cantina? Huh. Yeah, that doesn't sound that good. It was the first time that I thought, uh, maybe The Force Awakens is going to be too close to the original. And I was right. I still love the movie, though. But, that I digress. The point was, the second thing I thought was, 
That's amazing that the Hamilton creator is now involved in Star Wars. And I see all these Force for Ham things popping up, so I'm like, I'm going to do that too, but in my own special way. So, I made Luke Skywalker Hamilton, I guess. Now, I think the editing really was very tight on this one, and just overall, like before the big thing happened, which we'll get to, this was definitely already one of my favorites. I thought the editing was really tight. I did have a problem with the fact that a lot of the footage, especially early on, is very low quality, and I really couldn't do anything about that because I really had trouble finding footage for like some of those scenes that wasn't like that terrible quality. Like you know what I'm talking about, the part where it's like, and every day while slaves were being slaughtered, like that part with the Jawa, just... A lot of that footage early on just really kind of looked rough to me, but I kind of overlooked it, and I guess 40,000 other people did too. And again, we'll get to that in a sec. Uh, I just thought everything came together well, like... Again, I feel weird praising my own stuff. It really feels kind of wrong somehow, but I think the parts where, like, he fires the torpedoes, like the, just you wait, where he fires those torpedoes, like, that part really builds up well, and seeing the Falcon fly out of the Death Star, just from that moment on is where the video really picks up in my mind. Like, it's, it's good at first, but then it just, it's one of those videos that just gets better as it goes along, and it just... I don't know. I was really surprised at how many parallels I could find between Luke Skywalker and Alexander Hamilton. It was really kind of neat, and I think that's another reason I really love it, because, like, these are two of my biggest loves coming together, and just in such a great way, where they mesh really well, and I just thought, yeah, I, I like that. I guess I do have another nitpick with the part where Lando and Han and Leia are looking at Luke. Just the, all those white flashes in succession. I really wish I hadn't, like, you know, put those in. And the, the one with Leia goes on for much longer than Lando and Han, and that kind of triggers my OCD. I'm like, oh, no, I don't like that. Should have made that shorter. I don't know. Should have evenly spread them a little bit. I don't know. A little stuff like that. But overall, I thought, eh, this was a fun video to make, you know? And I did, the thought did come across my mind. You know, if Lin-Manuel Miranda saw this, you know... He saw what I did for Force for Ham. He would love this. And then he did see it. Like, oh my god. I still remember that day, January 29th, I think. God. Clearly I don't remember that day. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Nah, I think it was January 29th. I was at school. I see the video getting so many more views than normal, I figure, okay, somebody probably retweeted it, somebody shared it. I look on Twitter, this guy named Rob Wan we Win we Win Win something? He looks like this. He posted it. Hamilton meets Star Wars. Glorious. At Lin Manuel. Have you seen this? And there's Lin Manuel Miranda tweeting, I had not. Holy moly. Great job. Ah! The fact of the matter is, I've never really had a hero growing up as a child, but this guy is my new hero. Everything this guy has done, everything, just is amazing. And he is one of the greatest geniuses of our generation with what he was able to do with this musical. And seeing him say something about like that, about what I created was unreal. Like, I don't deserve the title of genius by any means. Like, trust me, I really don't. But, um, that's what a lot of people called me. Like I said, what genius made this? I'm gonna show this to my kids. This is beautiful, awesome, extravagant, magnificent, like, events of the century. They even got blogged about like sites by sites like the AV Club and the uh, Gothamist and this other one. I'm not making a very strong case, am I? But it it was insane. It, it rocketed up to like thirty thousand views. Now it's at forty thousand. I have a feeling Life of Crime is gonna beat it in like a little bit if it hasn't already beaten it. But still, like 
I still consider it like I guess my greatest hit because it did attract the, attract the attention of someone who is like the most brilliant mind of our generation, you know? 16 Tony nominations for his show, like the Pulitzer Prize for Drama, he was on the cover of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People, and he liked my video. I did see him in person once, like uh, during a Ham for Ham show from across the street, because it was very crowded, and my friends were all like, you gotta go up and see him, like, he'll, he'll love it if he knew that was you who made the video, and I'm like, eh, that's alright. I don't know, I don't want to go, like, pushing for retention, or, like, you know, whoring it up, being an attention whore, or stuff like that, but, wow, though, I, crazy, huh? I can't believe it. So, automatically, I have fond memories of Luke Skywalker Hamilton. Not just because I thought it was nice and well edited, and like, you know, a good mirror image between the two sources, and they're two sources that I really love, but just thinking that this was what Lin-Manuel Miranda, that wonderful genius, that guy, this is what he liked. That's pretty cool. So I bet you're wondering, what could possibly top the two Spongebob episodes and Luke Skywalker Hamilton? Well, these top two are probably really gonna surprise you. And me, I'm the damn fool that shot him. And I say, hey, hey, what a wonderful kind of day. You can learn to work and play and get along with each other. This was the video I made right after Luke Skywalker Hamilton. And it was almost discouraging for me to see that one getting so much attention when compared to this one. Now, don't get me wrong, I really, really loved Luke Skywalker Hamilton. I thought that was fantastic. But the fact that the video that came immediately after it was, in my mind, even better. And it really didn't get much attention. I don't know. It just struck me as weird. But with that being said, I know why it didn't get as much attention as Luke Skywalker Hamilton. It's not like anyone was clamoring to see Mad Max and Arthur together. I wasn't either, but then that idea just stuck. Because I watched Mad Max Fury Road, thoroughly enjoyed it, thought it was a great movie. And then I just thought, Arthur. So I threw that together. Now this is only a minute long video, but I feel like... Every second of this video is just brimming with ingenuity, like seeing the fast-paced action combined with the ridiculous juxtaposition of the Arthur theme song just works so well. And there's so many little touches in this one, like that splash in the water combined with the explosion visual. Just seeing the explosions line up like at the beginning just seeing Max gritting his teeth as he's going in that sandstorm and hearing DW's laugh, like, <laughs> and the, uh, hey, while the Immortan Joe is driving, just the drum beats as Joe drives off the road, and we can learn to work and play, and get along with each other, pew, 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 and then the, it's a simple message, and it comes from the heart with the spray paint, and then, of course, the ending, where it's just like, um, uh, hey, Wah! Wah! Mediocre! Like that, real, that was actually my reason for making the whole video, because I just thought of where Arthur th falls off the uh, thing, because DW is like, hey! I don't like DW, can you tell? And seeing Nux fall off the war rig, too, just, I don't know why, but it made me think of, like, those two things made me think of each other. So I made this whole video, and in my opinion, just every second of this video has just some creative way of merging these two sources that you wouldn't think to merge. And even though it's so short, I really can't get enough of it. It's like crazy just seeing these two things come together. But doing so in so many different, varied, creative ways, and just seeing 
something you would never think of. Like, this is... Not a match made in heaven, like Carl Weezer with Hey Ya Hey Ya and Kiram with In the Dark of the Night. This is something you never think of, and I feel like I've just been saying the same thing five times, but this is a minute long video, you know, I don't really know what to talk about, except... It's... Honestly, better than Luke Skywalker Hamilton, in my opinion. And that's like the highest praise I can really give out, you know? I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I just... If you haven't seen it yet, I'd really recommend it. Like, if you like pure insanity and like really creative ways to mashing stuff up, go for it. God, I hate praising myself. I sound so conceited. Oh my god. Oh well. Go check it out. You you won't regret it. Trust me. Okay, so I'm gonna go through a few honorable mentions, but I don't really have the honorable mentions. Like, I don't really have a list of them right now. But I'm gonna type them up and I'm gonna make them scroll as I'm talking right now. So, you might need to go back if you're listening to me talk because it's kind of hard to like focus on two different things at once, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you know what I'm saying. You know, how, how are you supposed to retain what I'm talking about and, like, read these as they're scrolling? I mean, don't get me wrong, what I'm talking about isn't really important, so you probably should have just read them already. But it's okay, I'll, I'll wait for you to rewind the video and just read them. And with all of that said, here's my number one pick for the best Shape Realist production. We fought with him. Me, I died for him. I trusted him. Me, I loved him. And me, I'm the damn fool that shot him. And wouldn't you rather be a left handed flea, a crab on a slab at the bottom of the sea, or a newt on the root of a bad tree, than a man who never learns how to be free until the day he dies? So I bet a lot of you are saying, What? Pot pot? What? Pot pot? What? I would be saying that too, because with all these really popular Spongebob and Hamilton and all that stuff videos, how is this one number one? That, that's a good question. It really just came to me out of nowhere one day. I was working on another Pippin mashup, the uh, Leo one with Morning Glow, and then I said to myself, you know what? I want to do something with PBG, because I uh, had just a few PBG sources from the uh, leftover on my uh, iMovie list of sources, because I was working on Emperor Porpatine and I used PBG in there, and I thought, eh, maybe I should try PBG YouTube Boop, so I tried putting that in, and it didn't really go anywhere, but then I thought, Pippin, and... Suddenly, the idea of putting simple joys with footage from PBG and playing putt-putt somehow just clicked. And not only did it click, it like really clicked. Because in my humble opinion, the PBG putt-putt Pippin mashup, the triple P, is the best video I've ever made. I know that sounds really weird because that's a really weird idea for a video to begin with, but there's just something about it. It really... it was an idea that came out of nowhere, but if you watch this video, it just all makes sense. Hearing PBG singing about Putt-Putt the way the leading player sings about Pippin, and even though it's a female voice, it still fits in really well with PBG. And that's the other thing. The lip syncing between PBG and the lyrics that are being sung by the leading player. I think it really fits well. Not only like his mouth movements, but the motions he makes really do well. And that's because PBG is just such an expressive guy that I think it just really fit that song specifically. And the editing is very fast. And it definitely, like, justifies a lot of the crazy things that happen throughout the video. And speaking of which, the video is crazy. And that's what I like about it. 
as it goes on, it seems to descend more and more into pure insanity. I mean, we have really fast editing where we just kind of see random stuff with putt putt. And it's just kind of like, oh, whatever, putt putt. You know, he's just kind of doing stuff. He had everything he wanted, he didn't want what he had. But then as it goes on and the song kind of picks up, it really goes nuts. There's a lot of crazy stuff that happens in Putt Putt, like that tree that brushes its teeth or whatever. And then there's other stuff that is just, just like the, the melon, that dirty, dirty melon. And with a song as weird as Simple Joys, where it's like, Oh, wouldn't you rather be a left-handed flea, a crab on a slab at the bottom of the sea? Even though these things aren't fleas and crabs, those things are so random that they mesh up with the random putt-putt things, even if they're not actually the same thing. And it just gets crazier as it goes on. Like, there's the part where it's like, uh... The hippo is skating and he just explodes. Da, 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 da. And then, really the strength of this one is the fact that the music matches everything somehow. Like, it, the part where PBG is clapping and like those three claps match up with the music so well. It just, it's weird how every little puzzle piece just fits together so well. But it's really the humor aspect that really gets me with this one. Just the fact that, again, the insanity grows. The sweet summer evenings are now replaced by this barn on fire. The feast in your belly when you're about to eat a cow. Smokey, the fire truck feast in your eyes. It's literally a madhouse now. Like, this video devolves into a madhouse, and that's part of the reason why I think it's the best because it actually has some sort of progression. You start off where it's like, okay, he's singing about pub play. Yeah, that's great, you know, why not? But then it just builds into something crazier. And I guess Luke Skywalker Hamilton does that in such a, you know, it kind of builds as well into like a sensational climax sort of thing. But at the same time with this one, it's just really fast, really humorous, really like, tightly edited, it, it just keeps me coming back. And the quality of the video is high. That's one thing. Sorry, Luke Skywalker Hamilton. You do have those few clips that are, like, not that, you know, well, quality-wise. But I guess that's the thing. Like, everything just came together for this one. Like, it really, I really don't have any qualms with this video at all. And that's kind of how I feel about the Mad Max one as well. It's just like, they're insane, yes, but in and they're such stupid ideas, but are they really stupid when you think about them? It's like, I don't even know. I've been rambling about this for a while, and it's just PBG and Pot Pot, but like, the insanity, not till the day he died and he just jumps off a cliff. Just the father sharing your supper, and it's those question marks, just like... Stuff doesn't match up in this one, but the video almost acknowledges that. It acknowledges that it's insane. And that's really its greatest strength. It's just such an insane, delightful video. It just goes by fast, the visuals support the music, the music supports the visuals. It really just all comes together in one beautiful crazy package. If I did have one nitpick, it's that ending where it's just like, the very last frame, how Putt-Putt abruptly stops. Like, that always kind of bugged me. I don't know, I wish I could have fixed that. But aside from that, this video keeps me coming back. I would highly recommend it if you haven't seen it, especially if you're a fan of Peanut Butter Gamer or Pippin. But even if you're a fan of neither, if you're a fan of just craziness, random humor, insane visuals, and, I don't know, well-timed music with lyrics, music with lyrics, music with footage, definitely check it out. I think you'll like it. So, yep, PBG slash Putt Putt slash Pippin, Simple Joys.
is in my opinion the best Schaeferillis production of the past year. Yay! Everyone's probably upset that I didn't pick Luke Skywalker Hamilton or the Spongebob videos, aren't they? Oh well. So I guess that was my list. And yeah, if I... I'm sorry, I don't have a lot of time to edit this together, but... And if I did have a lot more time, I would definitely make a top 10 worst Schaeferless videos list. That, that, mm, that needs to be made. But, the fact of the matter is, this turned out pretty good, I think. You know? I'm really kind of proud of some of the things I've put together over the years, some of the crazy things. And, I hope you guys have enjoyed it too, because... I do make these videos primarily so I can just kind of enjoy them and I post them to see if anybody else out there likes them, but, but people out there do really like them and they want to see more of the similar videos. That makes me really happy and it makes all of us really happy to see so many people around the world really liking our videos. So thank you all for supporting us and yeah, we will be on hiatus for a while. If you haven't seen the last video, you'll have to check that out. But. Overall, over the course of the past year, thank you all so much for supporting us. You all mean the world to us. Bye-bye.